Hi, this is Max. In this video I want to share some information on animation with Autodesk Maya in VR, both for learning animation and for production. This is Maya 2019, but this works very much the same for every recent Maya version. Here I am using the Oculus Rift, but of course you can use the Oculus Quest, HTC Vive or really any Steam VR or Windows MR compatible device. First off, I want to say that I think VR is perfect for learning animation, whether it's for your hobby or for a career. Because unlike a 2D screen, you get a real understanding of spatial motion. You can really see the 3D trajectory of objects. And you also have a much better understanding of the volume of a character or body part. Just imagine you could freeze time in the real world and walk around an actor observing him move one frame at a time. That's exactly what VR animation is. And since Maya is probably the most common animation software, you get the right foundation to work in the industry. The user interface in VR is streamlined to be easier to understand, but all the features and tools are the same. Marui works with the student version of Maya, so you don't have to worry about paying for a professional license. And if you're already an experienced animator, I think VR can make work more efficient and enjoyable. One thing of course is the speed of interaction. With a mouse, you work one axis at a time, like this. Spending time adjusting your point of view to adjust distances. In VR, it's just one motion. Bam, finished. For the high precision fine tuning, you can just hold down the alt button. No reason to zoom in. The other thing is experiencing the scene and the action. In live action production you always hear how they spend millions to create parts of the virtual environment on set just so that the actors in front of a green screen can get into their roles more easily. Well, an animator is basically an actor. So once you're in VR, you're really there in the scene, experiencing your character and its surroundings fully. That makes the acting part of moving the character rig much easier. And then there's also the option of using motion capture, basically recording your own movement in real time. And since this is all happening in Maya, if you get into trouble you can just take the headset off and continue with a mouse. The other great advantage of animating in VR is that you can interact with your rig very naturally. Instead of changing your viewpoint and adjust one axis at a time, it's more like moving a stop motion rig or a puppet. People often ask if your arms don't get tired doing this. At first it's a bit unfamiliar, but in fact it's not tiring because you never really hold your arms stretched out for a long time. I think it's actually more healthy than using a mouse because it's a more wholesome movement. And you can use Marui's offset feature to work at eye level while still keeping your arms in your lap. Just hold Alt on the left controller to reveal the offset widget and press the widget to set the difference between real controller and VR controller. Here, now my real hands are down here, resting in my lap, while I can still interact with my rig on eye level. This is good both for my hands and my neck. You can deactivate it again with a quick tap on the widget. Now to the animation. The first and most important thing, of course, is the time slider. This allows you to move through the Maya frames just by waving your hand. It's really intuitive, just like flipping 2D hand-drawn animation. When you hold the controller trigger, you can have continuous playback. Sometimes the range you want to see is too long or short to comfortably perform with your arm. Here it's helpful to scale the time slider by pressing the shift widget on the right controller and moving the left controller up and down. This way you can cover more time with a smaller hand motion. Sometimes it also helps to see multiple frames at once. This is often called onion skin or ghosting. You can simply turn this on by selecting the object and in the animation menu select ghosting. You can change how the ghosting is displayed in the ghosting options. In the animation menu select the small settings icon of the ghosting item. Here you can change how many steps will be displayed from before and ahead of the current frame and at what step size. Note that the settings are not applied to already created ghostings. 
so you can actually have different ghosting settings for different objects at the same time. To apply the new setting to an existing ghosting, just deactivate the ghosting and activate it again. Sometimes it's also helpful to have some reference footage, such as a video. This can be live action footage or the work of a famous animator you want to work from. To get this reference video into VR, we can simply use the desktop mirror. In the window manager, find the Windows desktop entry. This opens a floating window showing your desktop. Here you can for example open a web browser and go to a video streaming website. Or you can open a video player to play some footage from your hard drive. Note that you can adjust the frame rate of the desktop mirror with the FPS icon. Set it high enough to see your footage fluently, but low enough that it does not affect your interaction performance. If your final goal is a rendered video of your animation, you of course need to focus on how your animation looks from the camera's point of view. The first way to do this is look through selected in the display menu. This puts you in the place of the camera. You can still use the grip buttons on your controllers to make the scene larger or smaller. This way you can easily adjust the pose from the camera's viewing angle. The second way is to use a cam view. Just select a camera, open the animation menu and select cam view. The cam view shows the image that the camera will render, so you can use it to ensure that your animation will look good in the final rendering. Note that here too the frame rate can be adjusted with the FPS icon. If your camera moves, you can either lock the cam view to the camera, or you can leave it floating around freely. That about wraps it up. Thank you for watching and give it a try. Maru is available for all recent Maya versions and there is a free trial available.